Please welcome Secretary Dennis McDonough. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction, and it's really great to be with everybody today. I was looking forward to being with you yesterday, but I know that uh, deliberations uh, on day one ran over, so thanks uh, for the opportunity to be with you today. I want to thank the many other leaders from across the government who have been with you uh, yesterday and today. Um, and I want to obviously thank President Biden and Vice President Harris, who brought us together for this great event. We've been working towards this uh, since uh, late, late last spring. So we're thrilled to, to be able to announce a couple of things today. Most of all, thanks to the tribal leaders and elders who are with us today. I'm speaking to you from tribal land uh, this afternoon because all this country is tribal land. And I proudly greet you in the tradition of the Ojibwe people from my home state of Minnesota, Anin and How. You know, Veterans Day was just a few days ago and I've been reflecting on the hundreds of thousands of Native veterans throughout history who have fought and sacrificed for our freedoms, peace, and prosperity. Vets like Charles Norman Shea, the Penobscot tribal elder and 97-year-old veteran of World War II and Korea, and one of the oldest people to land on the, one, sorry, one of the first people to land on the beaches of Normandy on D-Day, or Marcella, Marcella Lebeau, a 102-year-old Lakota elder who served in the Army Nurse Corps in World War II, or the 140,000 Native veterans who get their care from VA today, and the 24,000 American Indian and Alaska, Alaska Native uh, forces defending our freedom today. As with all veterans, our nation made those Native vets a promise when they signed up to serve the country, a promise that if they served us, we would serve them when they transitioned out of the service. And if they fought for us, we'd fight for them. But for too long, our nation broke that promise to them and in turn to all of you. And instead of receiving care, benefits, and honor they deserved, those Native veterans fought for freedoms and rights overseas that they did not fully enjoy here at home. That's a tragedy. And while we cannot undo the dark history, we can make sure it doesn't repeat itself. So let me start by saying here and now that those days are over. And this administration, those promises will no longer be broken. Not on President Biden's watch, not on my watch. Native vets will get the care, benefits, services, and honor they deserve on Veterans Day and every day. There are so many ways in which we're working to keep that promise, but I'll just highlight a few today. First, just last week, VA stood up the first ever Veterans Affairs Tribal Advisory Committee to help us collaborate on Native veteran issues with those who best understand them. Second, in order to ensure effective delivery of Native veteran services, the Veteran Health Administration is establishing a new office to coordinate issues related to tribal veterans' health. Our goal is to have the office up and running by March 2022, and we look forward to working with each of you to bring it to life. Third, I'm particularly excited about this because it comes out of a call we had together, many of us, earlier this spring. VA has developed the Tribal Representation Expansion Project to make sure that Native veterans have access to tribal represent representation before VA. 
In 2017, the department revised regulations to permit tribal organizations to be recognized as veteran service organizations. But these revisions did not result in a significant increase in representation. So to continue to facilitate access and representation, we're planning to authorize certain tribal veteran service officers affiliated with tribal governments to prepare, to prepare, present, and prosecute veteran benefit claims before VA. This will be starting in early 2022. Last, but in no way, no way least, we're doing everything in our power to help tribal nations through the remainder of this pandemic and to make sure that what happened over the last 18 months never happens again. As a part of that effort, we've vaccinated more than half of American Indian and Native Alaska Native veterans and cared for them with more than 88,000 telehealth visits. We've signed a new memorandum of understanding after consulting with you and other tribal representatives in the establishment of the memorandum. We've assigned a new memorandum between VHA and Indian Health Service to improve access and outcomes for native vets and non-vets alike. And we've sent doctors, nurses, and clinicians from VA to care for non-vets in Indian country as part of our fourth mission, deploying 289 staff in support of Navajo Nation and IHS. And I was just updated this morning that we've just made additional beds available to our tribal partners in my home state of Minnesota. Altogether, these efforts will help us make sure that Native vets always have an advocate at VA and always get the benefits, care, and services at VA that they've earned and so rightly deserve. And look, we cannot, in fact, would not do any of this great work without you. My commitment, I say to you again, as I've now said several times, is that we won't make any decisions about you without you. Fact is, we're here for you. And that we will fight like hell every day to keep our promises to Native vets and to all of you that our nation broke for so long. Because you deserve our very best. Native veterans like Charles Norman Shea and Marcella LeBeau deserve our very best. And with President Biden leading the way, we will give you nothing less. So on behalf of all of VA, thank you for your partnership, your honest and aggressive sometimes consultation, and your leadership of the nations you so ably represent. God bless you and Native veterans, their families, caregivers, and survivors. I look forward to working with you today and every day to serve them as well as they have served us. So thanks again for uh, letting me be a part of today. I will tell you I was disappointed to not be part of yesterday uh, just because I was excited to make these announcements. Uh, but I'm really glad uh, to have gotten some time with you today. So I yield back. Thank you very much.